this video, let's use a Google form to invite people to a party using the form to share party details and as an RSVP. RSVP is a borrowed French acronym whose letters stand for Répondez s'il vous plaît or Respond if you please. The intended meaning is a request for a reply. Do you plan on attending? Yes or no? Party organizers may have contracts with third-party caterers or vendors who charge by the anticipated number of guests. A Google form invitation will allow guests to tell us if they will be attending the party. Let's click on the App Launcher. Then, let's click on the Google Form icon. Next, we're going to click on the Party Invitation Template. And this will take us right into an invitation template that Google has developed for us with questions appropriate for invited guests to fill out, such as whether they can attend or not. And if so, what dishes they may bring and if they have any food allergies. Let's click on, highlight, and delete the Latin example that is in the description window. Speaking of Latin, let's imagine that this is an ad hoc or an impromptu party. It asked, we want to have the party in three days, but we don't have time to send paper invitations through the regular mail. This is a perfect scenario demonstrating how Google Forms can be super convenient. There's no paper because they are electronic, and we could share the invitation link via email or text message and get immediate feedback. Let's say that we send out the invitation and then we notice that we have made a mistake with or need to edit a party detail. No worries. We can make the desired changes saved in real time through the master Google form and everyone with the Google form link will immediately see the edited version. So now let's edit some of the questions in the template. Let's make a simple edit such as deleting a question. We don't want guests to feel obligated to bring anything to the party, so we'll just click on the question area to elicit the edit mode for the question, and then click on the garbage or trash can button to delete it. Next, let's edit this question which asks about allergies just because we would like the person who is in receipt of the invitation to also communicate with us, the hosts and senders of the Google Form invitation, about any food allergies or dietary restrictions of those people who accompany the invitee. Because this has to do with the health and well-being of guests, let's make this a required question. When clicking the required button, invitees will need to answer this question to complete the form. With this question asking for an invitee's email address, Google has a default set to accept only an email address to be entered or typed. We could delete this requirement by clicking on the three dots and clicking on response validation. Perhaps we want to edit the question for an email address and instead ask for the invitee's phone number. It is recommended that if asking for a phone number, keep the question type as a short answer to accommodate different ways people input their phone numbers and further do not set the response validation for number and whole number because people will use parentheses around area codes and dashes between sets of numbers which aren't whole numbers. Just leave the answer type as short answer without response validation. We could just ask for both an email address and a phone number. At any time we want to add a question, we'll just click on the Add button to create a new question or prompt. Let's focus on creating a question which asks the invitee if they or a person or people they will accompany the party will need any accessibility accommodations. We know that the pizza parlor where the party will be held is wheelchair accessible and Google Forms are accessible for screen readers. Before we could share the Google Form with potential guests, we will need to publish the form, and we will do that by clicking on the purple rectangle at the top right of the Google Form, and then we'll click on Publish again within the prompt window. Let's add the word pizza to the title of the Google Form, so it will be Pizza Party Invite. And then we'll click on the color palette icon, then click on the image uploaded button to change the header on the preset invitation template. We could choose from other template images. Let's click into the party category to see what other options for party images we have available. And then we can click into food and dining and see if we like any of these images. And we can see that the image options are colorful and overall represent a variety of artistic tastes, pun intended. Let's click upload and then click browse to upload an image from our computer. After that, we will navigate to where our desired image is saved and stored on our computer. Once we find it, we'll double click on the image to upload it. And next, 
let's choose which swath or sliver of the picture we'd like to use as our invitation header. Showing vegetables with the pizza allude to the salads that will come with the pizza. Once we've chosen the specific section of the image we would like as our new header, we'll click Done at the bottom right of our screen. And now we'll see our new header image being established and saved in real time. And once it's set, we'll click out of the editing mode. Before we copy the link to the form and share it, let's go into settings and make sure that the form is accessible or open to anyone with the link. We can see at the bottom of the responses section of settings that the Google default for the invitation template is set to limit to one response which means that anyone who fills out our invitation Google form needs to be signed into Google. However, we may have some invitees who do not yet have a Google account, so let's unclick the requirement for recipients to have to sign into a Google account. Now, let's get the link to the form so that we could share it with people. We'll click on the link icon at the top of the toolbar, then we'll copy the link so that we could email it, text it, post it to a web page, etc. We also have the option of copying a shorter link. Here we have an example email draft with a Google form link copied and pasted into the email. We could send it just like this, but let's make it more accessible for people using screen readers by creating a hyperlink. We'll highlight the word or phrase where we want to embed the link. Then we'll click on the insert link icon at the bottom of the email toolbar. This will open up a window where we paste or insert the link. Then we'll click apply in order to save it. Now we can see that we have a hyperlink that invitees can click on. When we click once on the link, the link itself appears with some editing options. Here is an example of what the emailed Google Form invitation looks like as a hyperlink. Hyperlinking is more accessible in that some of our invitees could be seen impaired or blind and use screen reader software that reads the contents of emails and web pages for them. When we create a hyperlink, a screen reader will read link invitation or it will say link and then whatever words we highlight in order to embed the Google Form link. When we copy and paste the entire link, a screen reader will read the words in the email and then we'll read every letter and character in the Google Form link, starting with HTTPS colon backslash backslash docs and so on. Hyperlinking is not only accessible, it looks more organized and neat. A second option to share the link is to click on the share icon at the top right of the screen. When we do so, we can see that we are the only editor, which is the Google default. We can also see that anyone with the link can open and fill out the Google form. And this window is where we will insert the email addresses belonging to invitees to whom we would like to send the form. Here, we've added one of our invitees' email addresses, and when we're done adding email addresses, we'll click Done. This will open a box in which to compose a message that will accompany the invitation link. When finished, we'll click Send. When recipients open their email from us, they will be able to click into the invitation with two different links, or they could just fill out the form as it has been embedded in their email. This makes participation in filling out the form even more convenient. After sending out our invitations, we check back later and see that we have five responses. So let's click on responses so that we could view our neatly organized data. Our first view is a summary of all the responses, and as we scroll down, we'll see answers to the questions that we asked on our invitation. We can see that five people have responded, and out of those five respondents, one has responded that they are unable to attend. Of the four people who responded that they would attend the party, two respondents replied that they were each bringing one person, one respondent replied that they would be one of four people, and one respondent replied that they would be one of five people. So we have a total of 13 people altogether so far. Now, let's take a look at what our respondents are saying about food allergies. One respondent commented NA for non-applicable, which people place on forms if the question does not apply to them. Perhaps this was the respondent who stated that they could not attend. We have two guests who have gluten allergies. Gluten or gluten, which is a protein found in some types of flour that go into pizza dough, can cause upset stomachs and can have other uncomfortable effects for some people, lamentably. We'll be sure to order gluten-free pizzas. We also have a guest with a peanut allergy, so we'll make sure that we inform the executive chef and manager of the pizza parlor of these and other food allergies as they are communicated to us. 
in review of answers to our accessibility question, we could see that one of our anticipated guests unfortunately broke their leg in a bike accident and they are in a cast using crutches. So we'll make sure that the guest has the access into and within the restaurant that they need. Let's click into the answers to specific questions. In this case, let's look at the accessibility responses. We could further click into a specific respondent's completed RSVP Google form to view all of their responses. When we click on this response, we see that the guest has a definitive accessibility need and his wife is one of the gluten sensitive guests. This information will be helpful in helping our guests enjoy themselves without having any challenges brought on by the venue or food. In our responses by question page, we can navigate from question to question by clicking on the back and forward arrows, or we could click on the arrow for the index of questions and then enter questions and view answers in that manner. We can further click into each individual respondent's entire Google form invitation and RSVP for, from each question. This really means that we have multiple ways of viewing questions and answers, and it's easy to find data, either collectively or individually. Lastly, we can view all of our invitation RSVP answers in an organized Google Sheet by clicking Link to Sheets and then clicking on Create a New Spreadsheet. This will take us into our response spreadsheet with each column being a group of answers for each question of our Google Form invitation. Our master Google Form invitation where we could check our responses as well as our Google Sheet where we could also check our responses are both stored in our Google Drive. This has been a video on how to create a party invitation and RSVP on a Google form.